episode of Black Foodies How to Eat. Today I've got a really special episode because I've got my friend Segan here. Hello. Segan is a content creator, she's a YouTube maven. What she does best is really like infuse the culture. Yeah. You know? Yeah, thank you. That was such a nice intro. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? So I'm a YouTuber. Um, like Ed mentioned, I love to infuse the Eritrean culture in my content. So you will always see me kind of dabble into the food, the clothing, the traditions, all of that. And as you can see, we're representing today, okay? And we want to just give you some pointers so you know how to eat the way we do. Let's just open up, skip the dishes. The food has finally arrived. It looks and smells so good. It smells amazing. Oh my god. I ordered a veggie platter, and when you get the platter, you get a little bit of everything. What we have here, you guys, is the traditional way that it would be served at an Eritrean or Ethiopian restaurant. Mm -hmm. You have this large platter, you share it with your friends and family, and we wanted to recreate the experience at home. So when I was ordering on Skip the Dishes, I made sure I added a note to have it in separate packages. That way I can pour the sauces and the stews on top of the injera. What's the number one tip you should know? Use one hand when you're eating injera. Mm -hmm. You don't eat injera with like two hands going in at once. Totally taboo to use both your hands. Maybe we could start with some of the veggie options. So which one is like your favorite? My favorite is shiro. Shiro, oh. I love shiro. I make shiro sandwiches. I make, <laughs> I just, I feel shiro is like the best. Just like chickpea stew that they make that is really rich, it's really creamy. And it's one of like the favorites. If you ask any East African, they're gonna talk about shiro. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I suggest you get is the dorowet. It's a national dish of Ethiopia and it is made and prepared for every big holiday, for weddings, for any celebration. Mm -hmm. I love the, the boiled egg in the middle. Like when I was a kid, I used to argue with my little sisters. <laughs> I'm gonna argue with you right now. I know, I was like, <laughs> So injera, we didn't really actually get into what injera is. Injera is this flatbread that is really spongy. Mm -hmm. It kind of has like a hint of sourness to it because it's fermented, yeah. but it is the backdrop to Ethiopian and Eritrean cuisine. It acts as like a utensil, it's yeah. a bread. For a gluten-free option, make sure you check off the gluten-free injera. Mm -hmm. I like to take a piece of injera. Mm -hmm. I like to kind of like scoop it. Like you're almost making like a little tent or like a teepee, if you will. And then you just go in and plop it in. Yeah, you I love it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I definitely recommend when you're ordering Ethiopian or Eritrean food is don't forget the extra sauces. You have to order some meat mita and some awaze on the side. Now the meat mita, it's a powder. It's basically a spice of really hot chili peppers and cardamom and some other Ethiopian spices and it's like packed with flavor. But we actually pour just a little bit on the side and we dip our meats into it. How would you describe awaze sauce and flavors? It's like, it's kind of like what you said about the meat mita. It's like a burst of a lot of spice mm -hmm. and it's very, if, if spice isn't your thing, then I wouldn't necessarily dip the meat in it. But I mean, if you're a spice lover like me, then you will okay. absolutely love a latte. It is delicious. Um, and this is another thing when you're sharing, try to stick to your side, guys. That's how you keep it polite. And inside has a lot of meat and I'm a meat lover, but the one thing you don't want to do is reach over it. It's, it's definitely another taboo. Another workaround with you know getting something on a different side of the platter is with the person you're eating with, they can actually give you a bite or a kulaso or a gorsha. Yeah, all you're doing pretty much is taking a piece of injera and then going in on a dish that your you know partner would like and then you would be feeding it to them. That's pretty much what we do in our culture. Anytime that I go into an Ethiopian or Eritrean restaurant, mm -hmm. I, I love when I step in and I hear the music. You hear the Teddy Afro, you oh. hear the Aster Aleke, <laughs> the Samhar Johannes, hey. you hear the Helen Mellet. Like you just yeah. know like what's bumping. So I would recommend if you want to bring the vibes home, just go on Google, search Ethiopian jazz, <laughs> Ethiopics, or maybe look up Eritrean music and you'll find some cool stuff songs and just play that in the background. Oh my gosh, this is so good, but the spice is coming to me right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually getting a bit hot, I'm not gonna lie. You know, what's that one drink that we always have? Ginger ale. Yes. When you're eating the injera, you want something fizzy and something like refreshing, mm -hmm. and I just feel like ginger ale just does that. If you want something less fizzy, I'd say like a mango juice. I was just about to say, like after having so much spice, like it's kind of nice to kind of bring it down with some mango juice. 
Okay, this is so good. I feel like I really brought that restaurant experience home. I, I love the fact that Skip makes it really affordable. Like East African food is generally pretty budget friendly, mm -hmm. but when you're going on the delivery apps, you want something that doesn't have any hidden fees. And Skip the Dishes doesn't, so I love it. That's amazing. Any, anything else we need? Honestly, let's just eat. Okay, let's, let's just eat. eat. <laughs>